Shall we join forces again? Then it'll be clear to everyone. How close you are to human, and how incomplete. თანამედროვე მუსიკისა და ვიზუალური ხელოვნების ფესტივალი. So, არაცნობიერის ნაკადი წელს მეორე ტარდება. ფესტივალი 15 მაისს იღებს starts და 26 ღონისძიებისგან შემდგარი პროგრამა თითქმის 2 თვის მანძილზე გაგრძელდება. წლევანდელი ფესტივალის თემა სხვა სხვა ორგანიზატორების თქმით წარმოსახვით სხვა გულისხმობს. რომელიც ტერიტორიის გარშემო უკვე არსებულ ნაკადებს ანაცვლებს და სრულიად ახალ სააზროვნო სივრცეს ხსნის. რაც იმას ნიშნავს რომ ფესტივალი საქართველოს კულტურულ ცხოვრებაში ახალი დინების შემოტანას აგრძელებს. ფესტივალის მონაწილე ბრაიან ინოსთან, უილიამ ბასინსკისთან, რობერტ ჰენკესთან, სხვა მოწვეულ თუ ადგილობრივ აუდიოვიზუალურ არტისტებთან ერთად წელს მეორედ იქნება ალვა ნოტო. Yeah, it has started with the Xerox series what is it, let's say it's a it's a kind of ambient project where I'm I'm trying to manipulate existing memorizable samples like that's memorizable in a way that they can create a, a picture a metaphor and uh, what I really wanted to achieve was that you basically copying copying that or repeating this kind of phrases in uh, similar to a copy machine yeah that's the reason the xerox uh, we all know the the, the term xerox but this was maybe make, making a copy and for, i was very interested in the in the copy of the copy of the copy like what is happening when you when you copying multiple times the, of course you lose resolution you lose uh, you lose something maybe you you winning as well something and i was very interested in this uh, principles to see the mechanism of uh, of copying or repeating but in a slightly different way adding something artifacts I see this as a very creative tool Yeah, because in in our society, multiplication and copying is something what is completely normal, and not ne- necessarily connected to a very creative process. But I gave this kind of process a lot of attention, and wanted to work with this creatively. I realized that I'm worked with uh, melodies and metaphors that had a very strong connection to my childhood. this was uh, maybe melodies from very old tv series movies i grew up in east german times when there was the moment of the space race everybody was traveling to space there was a big expectation about the future there was a big uh, there was a big uh, term of okay uh, society will change There was a fight between societies, East and West, uh, communism, capitalism, whatever. So there was a kind of comp- competitive situation, and uh, from from that time on, uh, I I memorized a lot of these uh, movies I saw or TV things or music I listened in this time or even sometimes ra- simple radio noises, and I tried to incorporate this this as a kind of. Uh, memorizable situation and uh, it be- for me it became a very emotional record in the end and uh, uh, I was as well not too afraid ab- about diving deeper inside to that This record was released uh, before the Revenant was uh, I was invited to join the Revenant score with Rigi and this uh, a lot of this music 
been quite inf been implemented in the movie already before I started working for the movie. So there was a kind of similar uh, similar spirit, but maybe 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 I'm wrong or right, but. Um, when I saw the movie the first time, when Inaritu showed me the movie, uh, when I arrived basically, I saw a lot of connection to a very important filmmaker for me, like uh, Tarkovsky, right? There, there are some scenes inside uh, the beginning, the end, uh, key scenes in the movie, like the church or this kind of thing, but you, I, know, I know very well from a Tarkovsky movie. So I, 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 when I recorded on on the Xerox Free, of course, Tarkovsky, Solaris, Stalker, uh, uh, been very present. And working for that movie, it felt very felt very easy because it recalled that kind of feeling. Working with Rigi on that uh, movie and uh, with Inaritu, who was very much clear about what he wanted, uh, it felt very easy to connect in, the, in, this, in this way. The collaboration with uh, Cyclo, with RioG, we met many years ago and uh, <clears throat> we both felt very much connected with this, what we're doing actually, what we're working on. And on some point we started collaborating that's the project Cyclo. And during the process of uh, trying, trying out which day, which direction it goes, uh, we realized that we're very much interested in uh, the connection of uh, sound and what sound can create in terms of shapes, uh, visual shapes. And for that we used uh, our X, XY oscilloscope more or less, yeah, like a correlation meter, a goniometer, it's called. It's a classical device, what, we, what you normally use for mastering in uh, vinyl, for vinyl records. And starting from that point, we uh, recorded two albums, but as well we uh, published a book where we basically try to analyze the, the sound material and what kind of visual material it produces. So it's a kind of dictionary, research on the connection between sound and visuals. Uh, in the first book it's already 11,000 images. It would be kind of, uh, let's say, the basic fundament of, the, of that project, what we try to, a uh, little bit to illustrate with the book. But as well we collaborated on perf performances mainly but as well on more installative things. For us it feels very easy to, to work together. Maybe because we're the same generation using similar tools. And so I think we have, we're sharing a strong area of interest. The collaboration with Blixar is a little bit different because Blixar uh, was for me maybe a very big inspiration as I was a teenager because I listened to the music of Einstein and Neubauten and maybe you wouldn't you wouldn't expect this in the first place because uh, Plixa comes from uh, I think he's a singer like in the past I always uh, avoided melodies and singing and, but uh, the collaboration with him was for me very interesting because I really like his writings his, uh, his lyrics, not, not only the project he, we did together, as well in the past, all the uh, all the the lyrics been very important for me. And he had a very strong. He, I mean, he grew up in West Berlin. I grew up on the other side. He is maybe a generation older than me. So it felt very interesting to bridge something in terms of generation, and, but as well in terms of uh, cultural interest and cultural context. we both German, of course, but, and we both have very similar, let's say, interests, but maybe we translating this in a different way. And for me, uh, to come back uh, from the inspirational point of view, for instance, uh, 
maybe from the, mu the music or what I'm presenting or what I'm playing today, you would you'd probably think uh, Kraftwerk would be a huge influence. But actually for me Neubauten was more influential because I always saw Neubauten as a much more artistic group rather than a classical band. Yeah? And, uh, and I felt very much uh, connected to the to the, the lyrics and uh, to as well uh, to the part of experimentation. Yeah, the very early stuff of Neubauten is very rough and very experimental. And um, but as well, they used very early sampling in a in a very uh, influential way, I think. And uh, I think this was. Uh, a huge inspiration for me and for that one I'm doing right now.